Hi everyone, uh, my name is Marina and today I'm going to present some research we did with uh, Alan and Masood while I was a PhD student at the University of Cambridge and specifically uh, when I was visiting the University of uh, Pennsylvania for my uh, academic secondment. Um, so um, we're going to present the structural morphology of polyhedral spatial trusses in static equilibrium via four polytopic stress functions. So what is uh, key here is this uh, reciprocal relationship between um, polyhedral form and force diagrams that uh, we're going to uh, explain uh, shortly. Uh, so this framework hinges on the idea of uh, graphic statics, which is a 19th century methodology for the design and analysis uh, of trusses in static equilibrium. And back then, it mainly concerned uh, two-dimensional cases. Um, and as you can see on the left, um, we have this notion of form and force diagram, uh, which are reciprocal. And this reciprocity means that if one changes, then the other one changes in response. So um, if you see uh, um, N1 of the form diagrams, uh, they represent a two-dimensional truss under external loading. And uh, given such a, a form diagram, a force diagram can be constructed where it's one of the edges represents the, um, the magnitude of the internal force. Um, however, that is not only a very visual way of understanding uh, the internal forces and their distribution, but it's all also a way of, rather than starting to designing uh, from the form domain, start to design directly in the force domain and see what uh, form in static equilibrium is going to um, be the result. Um, so what is really key is this interlink between form and force and the fact that you can start with either uh, and see uh, the updates and really interlink the form with the structural performance. Uh, at the same time, what we see on the right is that uh, back then uh, graphic statics were based on uh, hand drawing, so that could be rather tedious uh, for complicated cases, whereas today, of course, things are much more simplified with uh, um, the advances in uh, computational uh, design. So uh, graphic statics, uh, they really flourished at the end of 19th century, but at the, at the same time, they did survive during uh, the 20th century as a structural morphogenesis tool. And here we see uh, an excellent example uh, of, uh, of a famous bridge um, for which my yard uh, did use uh, graphic statics. And uh, back then, uh, if we go back to the 19th century, there were quite a lot of uh, seminal figures that really influenced um, the theory of graphic statics. And the, the ones that were particularly interested in here are uh, Maxwell, Airy, and Poncelet. So Maxwell was not only a very famous uh, physicist, as uh, he's well no known uh, today for uh, electromagnetism and uh, loads of other things, really. But he was also a geometer, a natural philosophist, and he was interested in, in a myriad of things. But at the same time, he, he really had a very important contribution in relation to uh, structural geometry. Um, at the same time, though, uh, Maxwell was uh, really aware of the work of uh, Airy, and specifically his work on the Airy stress function. And at the same time, Maxwell was a, a really visual uh, thinker. So uh, I think he, he was really keen on this visual expression of abstract ideas. And he uh, did use projective geometry and the concept of duality and polarities that uh, were uh, developed uh, from the French school and, uh, for example, from Poncelet. Um, so this is uh, the paper by Maxwell in which he, he does use uh, polarities in order to obtain uh, a reciprocal pair of polyhedra, which when they're projected on the plane, they directly generate a reciprocal pair of form and force diagrams. So um, following this construction, basically we have four interlinked um, objects as we're gonna see further on. Um, so this is based on the concept of uh, duality so if we see on the left, we have this form and force diagram, and um, this results in uh, nodes of the form diagram uh, mapping to uh, faces in the force diagram. 
and uh, edges mapping to reciprocal force edges and uh, vice versa. So here uh, is a table where we see that the two dimensional truss basically obeys the rules of a polyhedron, so one dimension up. And if we would think of generalizing that, um, then a three dimensional truss is going to obey the counting rules of a four polytop. So in that case, a form node is actually correspond to a hyperplane. And we're going to uh, explain what that means. So uh, when it comes to the 2D slash 3D case, we have a three dimensional polarity in which um, a point maps uh, to a plane. And that can be done uh, in a number of ways. So you can do this uh, purely geometrical construction using a paraboloid of revolution and the tangent cone. Uh, you could use di di directly the equations uh, if you have um, the coordinates for uh, the point. Or um, as well, it's possible to use um, uh, matrix operations. Um, so by using this uh, polarity, we can map reciprocal polyhedra to each other. And then um, if those are projected on the plane, we readily get a form and force diagram. And uh, why this is important? Because in this way, we can directly derive a horizontal static equilibrium. And at the same time, by having those four interlinked a reciprocal objects, by changing each one of those, then the other three are automatically updated. So um, some words about the Airy stress function. So basically, uh, for a 2D uh, trust in static equilibrium, the Airy stress function is a, a surface in three-dimensional space, um, which through differentiation can define actually the stress field um, of our 2D structure. But uh, for the case of pin-jointed uh, trusses, the air stress function, rather than being smooth, is actually plane-faced. Um, and so these ideas um, existed during the 19th century. And during the 20th century, um, they were further developed from uh, various researchers. And one example is uh, isotropic geometry by uh, Strubecker. Another example is uh, in the context of rigidity theory um, from the topology group in Canada by Walter Whiteley. Um, another example is the use of the air stress function for the generation of um, structural forms such as uh, volts and sails. And more recently, uh, the air stress function has also been used in the context of isotropic geometry for the optimization of, um, uh, of quad grid shells. Moreover, um, the use of the air stress function as a structural design and analysis tool um, was um, further investigated uh, recently and uh, specifically in relation to the number of uh, polyhedral liftings. And what this means is that imagine you have a two dimensional um, form diagram and the question is how many of those nodes can I lift in three dimensions in order to make a plane faced polyhedron? And it turns out that the number of those nodes that can be lifted independently um, equals the number of uh, self stresses for the structure. So, for example, we um, studied this idea uh, with uh, Alan McGrobby and Bill Baker um, in the context of uh, grid cell design and analysis. So, how this can be combined with the first force density method um, in order to derive grid cells in uh, static equilibrium. Uh, and this is uh, just an example uh, showing something inspired from the Great Court Roof of the uh, British Museum. And the thing to mention again is that um, um, this particular approach uh, can um, readily give direct uh, two-dimensional um, global equilibrium. Uh, so when it comes to 3D graphic statics, though, um, there are, let's say, maybe a couple of uh, approaches. So it's the polyhedron-based one and the vector-based one. And here uh, we're going to focus on the polyhedron-based one, where each node corresponds to a force cell. 
and then um, in this cell, the surface area of its phase actually represents the internal forces, as opposed to the case uh, of the 2D diagram, where it was uh, the, the edge length. So in the context of um, 3D graphic statics and the polyhedral approach, uh, we had uh, quite a number of uh, contributions um, in the last uh, decade. And for example, here on the left, um, we see um, an approach, uh, an iterative approach for deriving uh, equilibrium for compression only uh, structures. And uh, a similar approach was uh, followed some years later uh, to derive um, um, 3D uh, stresses in static equilibrium uh, for compression and tension cases uh, that uh, need not be necessarily to be uh, plane phased. Uh, but uh, at the same time, the, the fundamental role of stress functions was uh, investigated in the context of uh, 3D trusses. And as a, resu as a result, um, the area stress functions were generalized one dimension up um, to uh, what was called like a four polytopic stress function, actually. Um, and the role of, of polarities uh, was also generalized one dimension up. Um, so four dimensional polarities can actually be uh, reciprocated uh, to one another. And uh, as we see here, we have um, again the concept of duality, but this is also uh, generalized one dimension up. So now for a three dimensional uh, plane phased uh, truss, the constituent geometry is vertices, edges, faces, and cells. Um, so in, in the same way that uh, with the area stress function, uh, previously we would map uh, a plane to a, a reciprocal vertex, now we actually map a hyperplane. So um, here we see the four polytopic uh, uh, stress functions. Um, which are reciprocal through a four-dimensional polarity. And then when we have this pair, we can just project them down orthogonally. So for four dimensions. So what we get is this pair of uh, polyhedral form and force diagrams, where the force diagrams are those uh, uh, ranking reciprocals. Um, so in this case, we have a form node corresponding to a force cell and we have a form edge corresponding in a perpendicular phase, uh, the surface area of which uh, represents the axial force. So the characteristics of this particular method is that uh, for uh, plane phased 3D trusses, uh, it can encompass compression and tension cases. Um, so it can derive direct global equilibrium. Um, and it's an interactive design tool where the user can start from the form or the force domain. Um, so uh, because it's direct, there's no need for iterative optimization algorithms or matrix analysis procedures. And it does give insight uh, into the realm of four polytopic stress function. Um, so another geometrical construction, uh, which is uh, actually quite relevant to our research here is that of the Desarcs configuration. So um, if we study that uh, in the case of, um, of 2D, uh, what that is, uh, is uh, this diagram that we see on the right from uh, Maxwell's um, uh, 1864 paper. Uh, and in there, we had that uh, line W, and we were quite unsure as to what it is. But uh, um, it appears that it's actually the line W uh, that you can obtain from a Desarcs configuration, which means that you have this, uh, let's say, uh, pyramid comprising three planes that meet at the point. And then if that pyramid is cut with two planes, uh, those two planes intersect in a line, which is uh, this uh, line W. So basically, if we have uh, a, a 2D uh, form diagram, like the one on the top left, one way to make sure that this is in static equilibrium is for it to be a projection of polyhedron and thus to be in a Desarcs configuration, which means that um, those radial edges are going to need to intersect in a point. And if not, it's not in static equilibrium. 
And these constructions, um, they were implemented computationally uh, using Python uh, in the Grasshopper environment and uh, specifically using uh, MathNet numerics um, to implement the solver. So um, basically, um, what we did was to create this type of form and force diagrams uh, via the reciprocal for polytopic stress functions. So what this ensures is that um, the structures are, uh, by definition, within static equilibrium. Um, and at the same time, you can either start from the form on for or force domain. Uh, and by doing any changes, um, it is uh, the, the rest of the reciprocal objects are directly updated. Uh, and in this way, these are uh, different topologies that uh, can be uh, obtained by using this type of four-dimensional Desarcs configuration of uh, interconnected uh, envelopes. And uh, moreover, we did a, a, a physical model. This is a one-meter model uh, comprising timber uh, roads, which are connected with uh, 3D printed uh, nodes and some uh, perspex um, uh, quads on it. And with uh, these last images um, of the physical model, uh, I want to thank you for watching our presentation and uh, I hope you enjoy the conference.